Let's now move on to talk about the third type of motion graph, which is the acceleration time graph. So uh, acceleration time graph, as you can see here, you have acceleration as your y-axis and time as your x-axis. So the acceleration here can either be the x component of acceleration if you are moving in the x dimension or the y component of acceleration if you are moving in the y dimension, depending on what kind of motion are you having. So to, to be able to sketch an acceleration time graph, we need to uh, recall our concept of acceleration. So let's look at what is acceleration. Well, for instantaneous acceleration, the x component of instantaneous acceleration, it can be related to the velocity through this equation over here. So it shows that the instantaneous x component of acceleration is equivalent to the infinitesimal change of x component of velocity divided by the infinitesimal change of time, or we can say as dvx over dt. So we know that uh, our acceleration here will be related to the change of velocity. So that's our key in this video over here. So if you are going to plot an ax against t, an x component of acceleration against t graph, we'll, be, we'll need to be very clear about the change of velocity that happens in the x component. Okay, let's try to see what does this mean. If you look over here, all these blue arrows here are representing the velocity. So in this case, since all the velocity here are pointing either in the positive x direction or the negative x direction, you can assume that the length here is representing the, the value of the x component of velocity. It's the value of vx, whereas the direction of the arrow represents positive or negative sign. Okay, if it's pointing in the positive x direction, then it's a positive vx. If it's pointing in the negative direction, then you get a negative value for vx. This is a recall on velocity. But now when we talk about acceleration, we are very sensitive with the change in velocity. Okay, so we should expect to see some kind of change to the velocity arrow. Then you will know uh, there's a change of velocity. And when you see there's a change of velocity, you know there should be an acceleration over there. Okay, let's jump into this example straight away to try and illustrate what I'm trying to say. So as you can see here, at time equals 0, transition to time equals to 1, you see that it goes from no arrow to a small velocity arrow pointing to the right. So from nothing to something pointing to the right, the amount of change of velocity that happens will be something pointing to the right. And... If you have nothing plus this change, you end up with this final velocity. Okay, and for this final velocity, now if you take this velocity, add on uh, another change of velocity, then you end up with this one. Okay, then over here you can see all the velocity here is maintaining the same magnitude. So you expect no change in velocity from the second second to the sixth second. Whereas from 6 to 7 seconds, you can see that the arrow, the right pointing arrow is getting shorter. So it means by the magnitude of the velocity is decreasing. It still remains in the same direction to the right, but the magnitude is decreasing. So you expect this velocity, after experiencing this amount of change in the opposite direction, you should get a shorter uh, resultant or shorter final velocity. And after this velocity experience another change in velocity in this direction, you end up with zero uh, velocity at the a second. Okay, so this yellow arrow here are representing the change that the change that happened to the velocity over here. You can think of it as nothing uh, before plus change equals to after. Before plus change equals to after. Before plus change equals to after before plus change equals after. The same case over here, before is nothing, plus some kind of change, after is having something pointing to the left. Okay, so before that zero velocity, after experiencing a change of velocity in the negative direction, you will have a velocity pointing in the negative x direction. Again, from here to here, before 
is a shorter a shorter velocity vector then after experiencing this change you get a longer velocity vector okay then same 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 over here from a longer velocity uh, vector arrow become a shorter velocity vector arrow so you should expect if you get from a longer to a shorter you should expect a change in the opposite direction so this one before after experiencing this change you get after a shorter or a smaller magnitude of uh, velocity pointing in the negative x direction and this uh, velocity if before if we experience this change then it will cancel each other out right then you end up with nothing at the end okay so all these yellow here are represent all these yellow arrows here they are representing the change of velocity okay so you see that change of velocity happens between the zero to the second second happens between the six to the eight second between the eighth and the ten seconds and between the 14th and the 16th second so you should expect that you will see acceleration during these moments over here Okay, so let, let's try and translate what we know from this uh, diagram here into an actual acceleration time graph. So you know that from the 0th to the 2nd second, you experience an acceleration or you experience a change of velocity in the positive x direction. A change of velocity in the positive x direction means your acceleration will be pointing in the positive direction because the direction of change of velocity is the same as the direction of acceleration. These two must have the same direction. Refer to the previous video if you are not clear about this. Okay, the video on acceleration. Okay, so if you see the change of velocity is happening in a positive x direction, you know that the acceleration will be pointing in the positive x direction. If, po if the acceleration is pointing at the positive x direction, that means the x component of acceleration from time equals zero to time equals to two will be positive because positive means positive direction okay then we continue from the second second to the sixth second you should expect no change of velocity thus you should expect zero acceleration during that duration as shown over here now let's move on to the sixth second until the eighth second during this two seconds time duration you experience a change of velocity that is happening in the negative x direction the change of velocity in the negative x direction tells you that the acceleration is pointing in the negative x direction so if the acceleration is in the negative x direction it means the x component of acceleration should be a negative value because the negative sign in the x component of acceleration means the direction so if it's a negative value it means it is in the negative x direction so you should expect this one will get you a negative acceleration over here showing that this negative ax here means it's acceleration in the negative direction just like what we observe here okay from the 8th second to the 10th second you will see that the change of velocity is in the negative x direction that means the acceleration is in the negative x direction the acceleration in the negative x direction tells you that your ax your x component of acceleration will be in uh will be having a negative value because negative direction attach negative sign to the x component of acceleration something like this okay so you should expect no change of velocity from the 10th second to the 14th sec second so you should expect zero acceleration during that period and lastly from the 14th second to the 16th second you notice the change of velocity is happening in the positive x direction so if the change of velocity is happening in the positive x direction that means the acceleration is in the positive x direction that means your x component acceleration will be a positive value so you should expect from time equals to 14 to time equals to 16 you should expect a positive acceleration something like this okay so that roughly shows us the shape of the acceleration time graph and before we wrap up everything let's use dotted line to connect between the solid lines okay it's not good to leave the line hanging like this we use dotted lines to connect it okay so that wraps up the end uh, that wraps up our sketch of the acceleration time graph okay i'll fill in the values later when we are relating this acceleration time graph here to the velocity time graph 
but that will be in the next video.